Okay, we are going to do today a paint called Antarctica. And we are going to paint with a, we're going to paint with this a blue puppy with pink flowers. And I'll see you when the painting starts. And we're going to do this and then we're going to, can I do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> As Billy said, we are going to take a small petal sponge and use the Split Cake Antarctica, which is lovely blues, and just go over the eyes. And you want to do kind of triangle shapes over the eyes with the darkest color if you're using a different split on the outside, but then pull the triangle down past the corner of the eyes because those are going to be our floppy doggy ears. So I'm going to drag that down on both sides. The paint might first start looking like a butterfly but on the end it's gonna look like a dot and it does kind of look like butterfly wings which uh, my daughter <laughs> mentioned and you can think of it that way think of simple shapes to do this and then you won't mess up or, or get stumbled especially the first couple times you do it so now I'm gonna take that same split and I'm just going to do some almost triangular shapes on the cheeks too to get that color laid down and then I'm going to pull some white on the inside for the muzzle and for the nose and then up the bridge of the nose and over the forehead. A trick when doing the muzzle is ask the child to open their mouth when you do this part over their lip and that way you won't get white on their lower lip. And now you're going to watch me just flip back and forth between my white sponge and the sponge that had my blue on it, my Antarctica split cake, because I'm just going to try to blend these together. Now I will say blue is a hard color to blend in face paint. It can tend to be a little bit uh, tricky, a little bit more difficult. So just go back and forth and work on it. It does not have to be perfect. So this, of course, is my festival puppy dog. I do not spend 20 minutes on these. I did sweep just a little bit under her eye so that there's not a, a gap there and then went back with my white to make sure I have a nice pure white muzzle. And you can also use the opposite end of that sponge that your white was on that doesn't have any paint just to kind of blend everything in. And now before we start our line work, we are going to do a puppy tongue coming from the bottom of her mouth and you want to get this up uh, close to the top part of the bottom lip but not inside the lip so that they're not eating paint and Billy is gonna blow you and me some kisses while I load my brush with black for my line work I am going to use about a six is nice um, a number six brush because you get a nice big line it's not too thin and we're just gonna trace some floppy ears and then put a diagonal line down for the inside of the ear so around big floppy ear up a little bit thinner at the top so you want to almost pull that into a point over the eyebrow and then a diagonal line to create the inside of the ear really simple to make floppy dog ears and then the top I usually just do some zigzags you can certainly do some curls and twists right there if you want but I usually keep it pretty simple and now for the outside part of our doggy face we're just gonna do some zigzags going down and this also will cover up your sponge work. My sponge work is never perfect on the edges, but that's okay because my line work makes up for it. So for the puppy dog nose, you do want to think of puppy dog noses being a little bit uh, rounder and a little bit more like bulbous, unlike a feline nose is going to be thinner and closer down the nose. So I like to do kind of a big rounded out triangle and then pull a line down the center of the mouth and then a little triangle at the top. And then I go to the corner of the mouth and I pull up a few lines. Clean this up a little bit. I'm at a weird angle, so it's always hard to get something even when you're trying to film and at an odd angle. And then inside the muzzle, just do a few dots, either three or five always looks better. I didn't have a ton of room, so I thought three looked really nice, but always think odd numbers um, just looks better with uh, almost any kind of art you're doing. 
and then give the tongue an outline and a line down the center to define it, which is the cutest part of this puppy. You can do a pink tongue for girls too. That's pretty cute, but I chose to make this pretty traditional blue and red. I think she likes it. She thinks it's pretty cute. So that's all that matters. And then I am, I actually wiped off my brush and I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing on the inside of the ear here just to give some depth to our flopped over puppy ears. Really simple step, very quick, but makes a pretty big impact. And this doggy mask is so easy to switch up with any split cake you have. Of course, you can do purple and pink puppies are so, so cute. So just experiment with different splits and this technique. With little girls, I do usually add a flower, um, just a quick double dipped flower, usually at the top, sometimes over on the side as well. And Billy wanted flowers, so I'm going to add those for her. I'm going to do a double petal on the one um, on her cheek because it just looked kind of sad and small. So go ahead and add some dots. And then at this point, if you have time, you can certainly highlight. A little highlight on the nose is always cute. And then on the tongue as well. And then I'll usually highlight a few spots on the ears and then on the fur around the cheeks of the design. So just wisp in some quick highlights. <laughs> and there you go. You have got an adorable, cute little puppy dog face. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, please comment down below. And if there's a specific design you'd like to see, let me know. I'm happy to do a video for you.